What is going on guys? Welcome back to the algorithms and data structures tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about binary search trees. So let us get right into it. Now, as the name already suggests, we have a binary tree here that has a certain additional property. And a binary tree is essentially just a tree where each node has two childs, which is the left child and the right child. And then these nodes, of course, have a left and a right child and a left and a right child until we get to uh, the leaf nodes where you essentially have no childs or maybe you have one more and this one is a leaf node. Um, and this is essentially what a binary tree is and a binary search tree now adds um, a constraint to this which, uh, which is the following that the left nodes, the nodes to the left have always got to be uh, smaller than this root node here. So we have for example the number 35 here. Uh, if we have a node to the left, this node has to be less or equal to 35. So we can say it's 27. Now, if we have a node to the left here, it has to be smaller than 27, for example, 15. Now, the thing is now, if we have a node to the right, it has to be larger than the parent node. So if we have a node to the right here, it has to be larger than 35, for example, 46. But if we have a right one here, it has to be larger than 27, but still, since it's to the left uh, of 35, it has to be less than 35. So um, essentially, you can say it's something in between 27 and 35. So for example, 31. And this is the whole structure of the tree. So here, we have less than 46, but still larger than 35. So for example, 37, and so on. This is the essential structure of a binary search tree which essentially means that the middle element is, uh, or not necessarily the middle element when it comes to the position, but uh, the root node says uh, that everything that's, that's larger than the root node is going to be to the right, and everything that's uh, smaller than the root node is going to be to the left. This is the, the center of attention, and this splits the list into two, um, two halves. Now, in this case, this tree is kind of balanced because we have uh, three elements here, two elements here is not really unbalanced, but a binary search tree could also be something like uh, 25, uh, 22, 21, 4, and so on, and maybe just here you have 30 or something. So this is unbalanced, but it's still a binary search tree. A binary search tree doesn't have to be balanced, and it doesn't have to have uh, the center element as a root node. Um, so it could actually also be just a path like this one. This would also be a binary search tree, uh, technically speaking. The only thing that we need to make sure is that each element has uh, only smaller elements to the left and larger elements to the right. Now let's talk about why we even need binary search trees, why they're important, why they're beneficial to us. And the answer lies in the second word here, which is search. Uh, we talked about this in the last uh, couple of videos where we said that the runtime complexity for most data structures to find something is linear. So to find an element, if we have an array of numbers here, uh, which is not sorted or a linked list, uh, where you have a bunch of nodes pointing to, to the next node and so on, uh, in order to find an element in here, you have a runtime complexity that is linear, worst case and uh, also average case, because you need to go through... Um, through all these elements, even if you don't have to go through all of them, you're not going to have a logarithmic runtime, you're going to have a linear runtime, maybe you're going to have uh, n divided by two, but it's still linear because one half is just a constant factor. Uh, whatever it is, you don't, uh, you will not end up with logarithmic runtime complexity. However, in binary search trees, this is not the case. On an average case, you're going to end up with a runtime complexity that is logarithmic, so theta of log n. Now, the worst case complexity still remains linear, and we're going to talk about why this is the case in a second, but in an average case, in a basic, uh, in a usual tree, you're going to have a logarithmic runtime complexity. And let's look at why this is the case. If you have a basic binary search tree, you always know where to go to. So let's extend this tree a little bit, 51, let's just add one more level here. We have uh, seven, we have 19, we have, uh, has to be less than 31, larger than 27, so that. Then this has to be less than 35, so 34. Then here we could have 36. Here we can have 41. Here we could have, it's it's not the most beautiful tree, I know, sorry. 
um, then we could have 47 and then we could have 65 or something. So this is a binary search tree that is kind of balanced, that is actually totally balanced. And in this case, you know, if you want to find, for example, the element 41, what you need to do is you just have to navigate through all these nodes. So what you do is you look at 35 and you're looking for 41. So 41 is the number we're looking for. Uh, and when we look at uh, 35, we can know for sure in a binary tree, in a binary search tree, that this number, if it exists, is going to be to the right. So I can immediately, after the first step already, exclude all these nodes here. Because I know that all these nodes to the left are going to be um, smaller than 35. So I'm not going to find 41 in there if it exists. So I'm going to look at the right. So all this here is irrelevant from now on. I've half the problem size, so to say. Um, then we can look at 46 and know that if 41 exists, it's not going to be here. So I can ignore all of these. It's going to be to the left. So I'm going to go here, then I'll look at 37, and then I go to 41, and I'm here. I can ignore this one. And it doesn't matter how large the tree gets, we always have the problem size. Because we either go left or right, and all the other nodes are irrelevant. We can go left or right, and this action alone halves the problem size. By going right, I ignore all these nodes here. By going left, I would ignore all these nodes here, right? So you're constantly halving the problem size. And because of that, you end up with an average case runtime complexity of uh, log base 2n actually, which is just logarithmic runtime complexity. But we're going to see why this is not the case in the worst case scenario. Now, the reason we end up with a logarithmic runtime complexity here is because we have a balanced tree. And if we have a balanced tree for sure, if this tree is always going to be balanced, then also the worst case runtime complexity will be logarithmic. So if we have a balanced search tree, a balanced binary search tree, we're always going to end up with logarithmic runtime complexity, no matter what. The problem is that we're not always going to have a balanced binary search tree. Sometimes we're going to have a binary search tree that looks like this, for example. As I already said in the beginning, this could just be a path you could have 10, you could have eight, you could have seven, you could have two and you could have one. And this is a binary search tree. And if you want to have the problem size here, you cannot really do it because what do you do if you're looking for one, for example, you look at 10 and you go to the left, but there's nothing you can ignore here. So you're not really reducing the problem size except for, you know, removing the node 10. Uh, so you look at eight, you do the same thing, seven to one, but you're not excluding any elements. You're not halving the problem size. It is essentially a linear process because uh, you have to go through all the elements in the worst case to find one. Because of that, you end up with a linear runtime complexity in this case. Um, also, you you could have something like, I don't know, nine here. And then, of course, here you would go left, you would not ignore anything. And even if you go left here, you're just excluding one element, you're not halving the problem size. So you don't have a logarithmic runtime complexity here. So remember, you have a logarithmic runtime complexity in binary search trees on an average case, because most of the time there will there will be somehow balanced, even if it's not completely balanced, even if I have, for example, uh, some items here and here and maybe one more here, it's still kind of balanced and you have kind of logarithmic runtime uh, complexity. But in the worst case, you have a path or a very unbalanced tree. So you're going to end up with a linear runtime complexity. But if it's balanced, if you can make sure that the binary search tree is balanced, you're always going to end up with logarithmic runtime complexity. And this is why we're going to look at so called self balancing trees in the next tutorials. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. In the next video, we're going to talk about self balancing trees, which are going to solve the problem of unbalancing trees, uh, unbalanced trees and uh, the linear runtime complexity. So we're going to make sure that we always end up with a logarithmic runtime complexity. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video. Bye.